should have seen it last time. His shirt may say police. How far up we want to go all the way? But this officer is more specifically a Texas Parks and Wildlife game warden patrolling the Houston Chip Channel as part of the Texas Environmental Crimes Task Force. Who better to protect the natural resources than state game wardens? We're going down channel. 10-4. Pollution patrol is not typical work for most game wardens, but the threat to fish and wildlife from polluters is every bit as real as from poachers. And those who illegally foul our air and water endanger human safety as well. The city of Houston is constantly having to put out fishing bans because of some of these toxins that are getting into the ship channel, and that's what we're there to try to prevent. It smells nasty. <laughs> of course, every, everything out here smells nasty. Along with local law enforcement, the FBI, EPA, TCEQ, and an alphabet soup of other agencies, Discharges. a select few specially trained game wardens are helping keep our waterways safe by catching environmental lawbreakers. It's a different approach to the protection of fish and wildlife in Texas. have job security, we can use a few more of us as well, you know, because there's enough work out there. Environmental law enforcement can be an exciting field, but every day in the field is not always exciting. Stakeouts are a necessary part of documenting illegal activities. We do so much documentation now with live video, digital cameras, and things like that. You just can't leave the house without it. It's a very hot day. You just got to have patience and a little bit of perseverance, and we're waiting on a truck, and hopefully it'll be here soon. <sighs> We've had a long-term surveillance on this particular site in front of us. They're using it. Uh, to dump wastewater treatment sludge. Uh, they have a permit to be out here, except they're not following the permit guidelines. It's an upper end of a watershed. Sometimes 10 trucks coming out here a day, multiply that by 8,000 gallons, that's enough to make a river roll on its own. It's making pollution, contacting public water, so we're, we're concerned about that. One, one, nine, or point zero. Of course, some kinds of surveillance are more exciting than others. We had a flight operation this morning, which was geared for surveillance photos, and um, the helicopter was the best platform to use. So the facility that we flew over today, they're under investigation for unauthorized discharge, basically polluting, and it's impacting our waters. We can do a lot of things from the ground, but we would have never been able to get a total layout of the facility otherwise to see what kind of activity they had going on there. Regardless of how they are gathered, videotapes and photographs are critical tools for investigators and prosecutors. Environmental Crimes Unit Captain Marvin Temez reviews video evidence from past cases. We are now on top of the barge. What you're looking at here is a discharge of water from a cleaning operation on the barge. In this instance, they're illegally discharging it into the Houston Ship Channel. Could be hazardous. Uh, it is most definitely a pollutant. Here they discovered a sandblasting operation in progress without the proper shrouding in place in order to contain all the paint and rust that's coming off the side of that bar. That can't go into the water. Landfill dump site. Uh, apparently a landowner with an empty city lot is accepting garbage from people for pay. Unfortunately, that construction debris, although wrong to bury it in the first place, also contained asbestos. You can see the asbestos fiber bundle sticking out of it. To operate a legal landfill, you need permits from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. You just cannot dig a hole and bury your garbage in. You also can't dump trash, burn hazardous materials, and contaminate a river. But that's exactly what's happening here on the outskirts of Austin. There's another pile right there. What a mess. 
Investigators are especially concerned about these charred remnants of telephone and electrical wire. They're burning the plastic off so they can get to the copper wire. And in these ash piles, we have large amounts of contaminants, hazardous levels of lead. A little rain makes matters worse. Now that's just been introduced into the drinking water for people downstream. It is so important for us to try to catch this guy as fast as possible so we can try to get this material cleaned up. To the left just a little bit. Once again, a video camera seems the best way to catch their polluter. Is that good? In the act. That's good. I got a feeling he'll do something this weekend. <laughs> I think we're in good shape. I think that's concealed enough. These aren't your tracks, are they? Some detective work yields other clues. In all the debris, receipts are found that may identify their suspect. This is probably the most current lead that we have found. They're going to leave evidence behind, and that's actually the case here. That helps. Could so be a break, huh? Could be that a, could be. be. Break. Point three eight three west. Back on the Houston Ship Channel. It's foamy and brown. Something suspicious has been spotted. I think we might want to look at it. We found one discharge point of a facility and, and took some samples. That'll go back to our laboratory, and there may not be any kind of violation, which is good. That's what we hope for. Good job. High visibility, um, it makes a difference. That's the goal here, just to make sure that people know that we're going to be out looking for polluters, whether it's individuals or, or facilities. If there's a way that we can prevent it, that's a good accomplishment. Then hopefully one day, the signs can come down. Meanwhile, along the Colorado River, all signs point to one suspect identified by those receipts. We're getting close. This person, he's been arrested down here before. The exact same thing as, as five years ago. So that's something else that led us to this individual. I think two's enough to or you want to get three? We got an actual ID. We knew then we had a face, a name. Today's April 27th. We just needed to get on his trail. Appears to be some cable. Started some surveillance. We found fresh evidence at the residence that he was staying at at the time. Got a taxi cab that afternoon, went back, sold another couple hundred dollars worth. There he is. We have been going to the recyclers and trying to find out any updates. And lo and behold, this last Saturday, we have photographic evidence of a van coming down here with wire, burning it. Right. So now we're just we're just a day or so behind this guy. That's definitely him. This is just one guy doing one thing in one town that has a tremendous impact on our water quality. Okay, that's the cool it off. There he goes. The threat is real and the evidence clear. Within weeks, the wire burner is caught red-handed. We got him. It's satisfying when you see a whole team come together. It just shows that, that the task force works. At this time, Mr. Parker, I am going to accept the state's uh, plea bargain agreement that you've entered into with them, and I at this time do accept your guilty plea. At this time, sir, I do sentence you to six years confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division. Because he was a career criminal, we're happy with the results. Um, the threat to the Colorado has been minimized, but where he stops, somebody else begins. Your main goal is to get it cleaned up. Even after extensive cleanup, this land along the Colorado may never be the same. But the men and women of the Texas Environmental Enforcement Task Force will continue striving to stop and prevent illegal pollution. And that is comforting, in spite of the odds. I don't think we'll ever say we've accomplished our job. I think we can say we're fighting to do our job every day. My motivation is knowing that I'm making a difference. We hope we're preserving the water. We hope we're preserving the wildlife and the habitat for years to come.